EMG question of the day. Which of the following waveforms is likely to indicate a crush end effect in an innervated muscle fiber? Please pause the video, take a look at these options and choose the correct one. Then restart the video. This question falls in the category of things that look simple but are not. So let's analyze the question in part. First, let us understand what a crush end effect means. At rest, the membrane of a muscle fiber can simplistically be described as a porous phospholipid bilayer splashed with close voltage gated sodium and potassium channels. In this figure, I have only represented sodium channels because they suffice for this explanation. Now let's focus on the crush end effect. The crush end effect, which I am illustrating by the dark region of the muscle fiber between the jaws of the pliers, refers to a segment of the membrane with no longer functional voltage gated channels, as indicated by the X on the channels. Hence, this segment of membrane is not capable of generating ionic current, but since the membrane is intact, it is capable of sustaining capacitance current. Now that we know what the crush end effect is, let us briefly review the electrical characteristic of innervated muscle fibers and contrast them with those of denervated muscle fiber. As you recall, in EMG questions of the day 24 and 25, we address the electrical difference between innervated and denervated muscle fibers and concluded that innervated muscle fibers' intracellular action potentials were positive, brief, and monophasic, and they can be represented as quadrupoles. A quadrupole can be expressed as currents in the volume conduction model or as pluses and minuses according to their charges. Whereas denervated muscle fibers intracellular action potentials are long and biphasic. They can be represented as octopoles. An octopole can be expressed as currents or charges. Notice the morphological difference between innervated and denervated muscle fibers quadrupoles and octopoles and their different representations as currents and charges. Now I have brought the question back so we can take a quick look at the waves. A. An initially positive biphasic wave. B. An initially positive triphasic wave. C. An initially negative biphasic wave. And D. A monophasic positive wave. Now let's get to the meat of the discussion. In this frame we can see represented an innervated muscle fiber. The introduction of an electrode has produced an injury causing a crush end effect in a segment of the muscle fiber. In the territory of the muscle fiber with the crush end effect as we previously mentioned and according to the prevailing theory voltage gated channels are dysfunctional but the membrane integrity is maintained. Now let's bring an action potential starting at the neuromuscular junction and traveling towards the needle. The recording of such a potential will reflect the advancement of a quadrupole towards the needle at first too far to influence the needle, hence the tracing will be at baseline. The quadrupole will advance, but being still too far from the needle, the tracing will remain at baseline. Once the quadrupole gets closer to the electrode, the capacitance current is detected. The detection of the capacitance currents by the electrode will cause a down deflection of the tracing, as illustrated here. As you can see in this frame, the quadrupole has advanced, so the capacitance current is sustained in the segment of the membrane with the crush end effect. Hence, since this segment is the closest to the needle, the tracing drops even further. But at this point, the quadrupole will not advance any further because the involved segment of the membrane cannot generate ionic current. And because of this, the quadrupole begins to dissipate. This is reflected in the tracing turning towards baseline. And as the quadrupole fading continues, so does the tracing continues progressing towards baseline. And once the quadrupole disappears, the tracing reaches baseline. Now that we have described the waveform formation in the case of innervated muscle fiber with a crush end effect segment, we will contrast it with the waveform seen in the case of denervated muscle fiber with similar affliction. In this frame, we have a denervated muscle fiber. The introduction of an electrode has produced a crush end injury, as is reflected in the added figure. Now I will illustrate the recording of a potential traveling from the left to the right. Initially, the octopole is too far to impact the electrode, so the tracing is at baseline. Then, as the octopole advances and the needle becomes influenced by the octopole, the tracing turns down, reflecting the proximity of the positive capacity of the leading dipole 
of the leading quadrupole with the generation of the capacitance current at the affected segment the positivity increases then at this point the progression of the octopole stops since the crush in effect territory is not able to generate ionic current and the leading quadrupole begins to dissipate the dissipating quadrupole is recorded as a turn of the tracing towards baseline and as the quadrupole dissipates even more the tracing gets closer to the baseline until the quadrupole disappears and the tracing reaches baseline now the trailing quadrupole advances the advancement of the negative charge once close to the needle propels the tracing in a negative direction but no further advancement is possible since the segment of the membrane with the crush end effect cannot generate ionic current hence the quadrupole begins to fade the tracing starts returning to baseline with further dissipation of the quadrupole the tracing continue its descending trend and with the disappearance of the quadrupole the tracing returns to baseline so the answer to this question is d thank you very much for your attention